Hello and welcome. My name is Henrik Persson. I am the main uh, sword and buckler instructor at Uppsala Historical Fencing School. And today I wanted to do a quick, or not so quick, we'll see, video on the basics of sword and buckler according to the I-33 manuscript. So I will be going through the seven wards uh, of the system today. Um, I would like to start with saying that this is all going to be my interpretation. There are different differences between different interpretations. Um, some will not agree with everything that I have that I will be saying, and that's fine. Um, if you have comments, questions, so on, please feel free to uh, post them down below. I will also have a link in the description that will uh, uh, to the Victor Hour page where you can read one interpretation or one uh, translation, sorry, of the manual for yourself. Um, but yeah, without further ado, so the seven words. Uh, I'm here with the Royal Armories uh, book um, translation. <clears throat> which is what I'm uh, using currently. So the seven words are described as, uh, as follows. Note that in general all combatants or all men holding a sword in hand, even if they are ignorant of the art of combat, use these seven guards concerning which we have seven verses. And then you have seven verses for the seven, uh, seven words. Uh, the seven guard should begin with underarm, the second is given to the right shoulder, the third to the left, give the fourth to the head, give the fifth to the right side, and give the sixth to the chest. Finally, you should have long point. Note that the art of combat is described as follows. Combat is the organizing of various blows and it is divided into seven parts as here. These are, of course, in the book, then illustrated as well. Um, another <clears throat> note that the entire heart of the art of combat lies in the last guard, which is called long point. Furthermore, all actions of the guards or of the sword culminate or reach their conclusion in this one and not in others. Therefore, study it more than the aforementioned first guard. And then there is some more as well, but we will not read anything more from that. Uh, so one thing that you could take from this, or that I take from this, and the rest of the manual of course, is that the guards are not specific, uh, specific um, postures, specific positions of the sword. Um, the seven wards is a system to divide uh, all possibilities into categories. Um, so, um, what I just read is, of course, uh, applies to right-handed. I am left-handed, so I'll uh, just switch everything uh, to the other side. So, first word is underarm, for instance. It's here uh, for me as a left-handed. In my opinion, uh, everything that is kind of under your arm, or like under your arm on your weak side, uh, like this, whether it's up here or down here, like all of that is first word. So the words should be seen as kind of a tool for categoriz categorizing options. Um, I can look at my opponent, he is in first word, then I know roughly what he's able to do or he is in second and I can know what I can do what counters I have available and what he uh, or sorry what they can do from there uh, so it so shouldn't be like if I happen to st like stand here in first word that doesn't mean that it needs to look exactly like this anything like under the arm on this side is first word in my opinion uh, Right, um, 
So uh, that is kind of the basic overview of what words are. They are a tool for categorizing what you and your, your opponent can do. Um, right, so first word. First word is under the arm, like this. It's, uh, some picture shows it like quite far up, like this almost. Uh, and some shows like slightly further down. Uh, in my opinion, all of the, that, as I said, is the first word. From here, um, I interpret this as like the basic thing to do from here is a cut like diagonally upwards, like so. Uh, I do this here now with uh, with the false edge. So I have the false edge upwards here, and I rotate and I have a cut with a false edge, stopping in long point. All of the cuts in general stop in long point. You can also do this cut uh, with the long edge, like so, going up here, uh, and then you can end up rather up here. Uh, I would say that that depends on what you want to do. Uh, cutting with the short edge like this ending up here sets you up, you can cut into a bind and you are ready for a thrust immediately. Cutting with the long edge up here uh, is better in other situations. Uh, without someone to, to demonstrate with it's difficult to uh, to talk about exactly how that works. Uh, but cuts from below diagonally upwards, basically, uh, is my interpretation of cuts from here. Um, yes, you can do other things as well, but we'll, we'll stick with that for now. Second word is on your strong shoulder in the manuscript your right shoulder. I'm left-handed, so left shoulder. And you keep your buckler up. Uh, so again, somewhere high on your strong side, you're in second word. You have your buckler in front of you uh, to keep yourself safe. And from here, uh, again, diagonally, diagonally downwards, again into long point. Uh, here, um, and in first word, which I forgot, you can do these with either legs, for, e either foot forward. Uh, normally, I'll see, I'll back off, but normally uh, from, from second word, I have my, uh, as I'm left handed, I have my left foot back and I step forwards. But I might as well have my left foot forward and step with the right, and still cut the angle. Both works. Um, depending on the situation, depending on what I want to do to uh, continue from there. Um, if you're learning this, if you're like working with these, try both, see what happens. Uh, see what you like best, and then in specific situations, one might be better than the other. So second more, Strong shoulder, diagonally downwards, is the default cut, so to speak. You can, of course, do other things from here as well, but that's the basics, and we'll stick with the basics for now. Uh, third word, on then your weak shoulder, uh, in, my, in my case, the right shoulder, up here. Um, this is, here again, you can cut both with the, uh, uh, with a long or the short edge. Uh, the long edge is kind of the more intuitive cut from here, and then it's it's a uh, it's just a reflection. You cut from second word here, and you cut from third word almost exactly the same diagonally down into long point, taking a step with either foot, depending. You can also cut with short edge from here, having your hand turned. Uh, this is not 
is easier to do, I should say, if you're doing this in a flow. So say I cut from here, I go back, I don't stop, but I cut from here. Uh, if you stand around like this for a long time, this is going to be more awkward than if you do this kind of in a, in a situation. I would also argue that that also works kind of, let's say I cut from first, I'm in a bind, I go back, I cut from above on the outside of my arm, like here. Here I can easily cut uh, with the short edge, like that. Let's see, what's the angle? Well, maybe here. So, cut, going back. And this is a cut from above, diagonally downwards, with my short edge on the outside of my arm, of my buckler arm. That is also third word in my interpretation, because it comes from above. The sword is uh, high on my, weak, on my weak side, hence it is third word. It doesn't matter exactly where it is. Right, fourth word is depicted, is like given to the head uh, in the manuscript, and it's depicted kind of in the center here somewhere. Um, from here, you can of course very easily go down into second or go down into third, but then you end up in third or in second. If you stay here, I think that the default cut to do from here is straight down, like so. Again, uh, this is also depicted with the buckler being held back to begin with, uh, but I imagine that you want to have the buckler out as soon as you cut with this. Uh, not a lot of, very few plays are described against or from the fourth. Uh, most likely, or according to the, uh, the sources um, or the experts, those some pages in, in what should have been the section on the fourth seem to be missing. So we, it might be that we just don't have it. And they were actually written down, but they've been lost somewhere. Uh, but there is not that much about what to do from fourth described. There are a few things. Right, so that was first, second, third, and fourth. Fifth is below to your strong side. Right if you're right-handed, left if you're left-handed. So down here somewhere. Um, it's not entirely clear whether you're supposed to keep your sword out to the side like I'm doing here, kind of like out here, or whether you're supposed to have it back. Uh, but as I also said, both of those would be fifth. As long as you have it low down here somewhere, it's fifth. Uh, here again, I would, I would argue that diagonally upwards cut is the default thing to do from here. Uh, either with the long edge or with the short edge. I like this a lot better with short edge, like sweeping up like that. Uh, either like knocking incoming <laughs> cutter thrust to the side um, or kind of cutting towards the hands or something. Uh, but short edge, long edge, long edge maybe you will end up again up here somewhere. Um, but as noted, almost always um, you want to end up with your uh, point towards your opponent. Uh, fifth is also described as from here you can easily move into a thrust, but then you move into the next word, the sixth word. The sixth word is given to the chest um, and is kind of not entirely clear how, you hold, how the picture depicts it. Uh, whether it's uh, holding kind of like this, or like this, or like this, 
Um, again, I see it as a category. If you have your sword kind of here somewhere, uh, you are in sixth ward. Uh, from here, basically what you do is thrust. Either on the outside of my buckler, like that, or on the inside of my buckler, like that. Or in another fashion, under the buckler. Uh, but somewhere, uh, somewhere like having the sword, it just hide in any in some fashion. You're in six four, uh, and there are definitely uh, pros and cons of having it one way or the other. Like here, having the long edge to my left side, and here having my short edge to my left side, depending on how I want to bind, what my opponent is doing, so on and so forth. Both are six. Uh, and the other little thing you want to do from six is thrust. Right, seventh ward is long point. And again, we've been told that all actions of the sword and all cuts and so on should kind of end up uh, in long point. So long point is basically. Um, any case where you have your sword stretched out in front of you. Uh, some instances of one point in the book are illustrated with the like with the point downwards here. Some are like fairly straight, and some are with have a point high. Uh, these are all classified as long point in the manual. The point is the point is. Um, for it to be long point, your sword should be extended in front of you with the point forward. Slightly up, slightly up, slightly down, it's not that important. Extended in front of you, you are in long point, and the place and counters to long point then applies. Um, and that is the seven basic words of the I-33 system. <coughs> As I mentioned, footwork is not described clearly with any of these. Um, like step, like which foot you have in front, which steps you take, um, depends on the situation, depends on what you want to do, depends on what you like. Um, there are there is a, one single instance in the manual where footwork is clearly described. Uh, it should also be mentioned that these seven position, positions or categories of uh, categories of positions rather uh, are not the only way to use the sword. More like several other positions of the sword, several other things are described in the manual, these seven are the basic categories, uh, the basic, the, the seven basic words. There are others, as I said, uh, but these are uh, how you break down your own and your opponent's options uh, in I-33. Okay. That was all I had for today. Thank you very much for listening and have a good day.